Sometimes a successful career isn't enough to make you happy. Case in point, Gordon Ramsay. I've always got something to say, button it! You've now pushed me to the limit. I suggest you shut your mouth. Despite his many accomplishments, Ramsay has experienced more than a few ups and downs. And though he's arguably one of the world's most celebrated chefs, he's also endured lots of tragedy in his personal life. In 2007, Gordon Ramsay wrote an article for CNN in which he opened up about his troubled childhood, writing that, "...growing up, my father was less than a perfect role model. I watched how he battled alcoholism and how he became terribly violent with my mom, to the point where she feared for her life. There were instances when the police were called to take him away, mom was taken to the hospital while we kids were taken to a children's home." 20 years ago, I got dealt a dysfunctional card. My little brother became a heroin addict and my father became an alcoholic. So many years later, Ramsay still can't comprehend why his mother stayed in such a toxic and abusive relationship. As he puts it, she deserves so much better and so much more. It still pains me to remember how badly he treated her. I have four young children of my own, and I could never see myself behaving the way my father did when I was a child. I want to be a role model for my children and have them look up to me. Elsewhere in the article, Ramsay discusses the work that he and his wife do for the UK charity Women's Aid, an organization that aims to end domestic violence against women and children. He writes that, "...domestic violence is not identified solely by violent physical abuse. Instead, it is defined as physical, psychological, financial, or emotional violence that takes place in a relationship, intimate or family-oriented." As he mentioned, Gordon Ramsay's brother Ronald has endured his own struggles, and it sounds like his issues have had a significant impact on Gordon and his family. In an interview with Jonathan Ross, Gordon Ramsay opened up about his brother's addiction to heroin. "...I don't think there is any easy drug, but when you stoop to the depths of heroin, it's very rare you get back. We've done everything we can to help him, now he just sort of binges and disappears. So that's just a constant reminder, and also being a father of four ourselves, you need to be there for them because this stuff is rife." Gordon has seen the darker side of drugs on a few occasions. Years earlier, a colleague reportedly died of a cocaine overdose. In his ITV documentary, Gordon Ramsay on Cocaine, he reveals, "...we had dinner the night before he passed. I wish I'd seen signs earlier." In the same program, Ramsay searched for evidence of drug use in his own restaurants. "...across my London restaurants, I've had five staff and twelve customer loos tested." He reportedly found traces of cocaine in both the staff and guest facilities. As he told Jonathan Ross, "...I called a meeting. I didn't throw anyone under the bus. I didn't single anyone out. I just said, "'Look, this is everywhere. It's spotted in the restaurants and it needs to stop.'" Ramsay claims drug use is quite prevalent in his industry, explaining in his ITV documentary, "...I saw cocaine quite early on in my career. I've been served it. I've been given it. I've had my hands shaken and left with little wraps of foil. I've been asked to dust cocaine on top of soufflés, to put it on as icing sugar. Coke's everywhere. It's spiraling out of control." You know, those samples, those swabs, I mean, some of them are bright blue. And that's in my own business. That's my responsibility. In 2016, Gordon Ramsay posted this heartfelt message on Facebook. "'Hi, guys. Tana and I want to thank you so much for your support over the past couple of weeks. We had a devastating weekend as Tana has sadly miscarried our son at five months. We're together healing as a family, but we want to thank everyone again for all your amazing support and well wishes. I'd especially like to send a big thank you to the amazing team at Portland Hospital for everything they've done." In 2019, Ramsay and Tana had their fifth child, Oscar James Ramsay. On Instagram, the chef wrote, after three BAFTAs and one Emmy, finally we have won an Oscar. Please welcome Oscar James Ramsey, who touched down at 12.58 today for some lunch." Gordon Ramsay has something of a reputation as the tough guy of the cooking world. But even though he may be tough, his emotions were certainly tested back in 2006, when his pet pigs were taken to be slaughtered. In one episode of The F Word, his two sows, Trini and Susanna, were killed, and Ramsay watched the whole process. "...I'm not very happy to see you girls go. Yes?" The chef watched his pigs get stunned by an electric shock. Then they were shackled by their hind legs, hoisted to the ceiling, and each had their throats cut. The bodies were then placed into a scalding tank, shaved and disemboweled. Though Ramsay had raised the pigs expressly for this purpose, it was still a difficult thing to watch. Describing the experience, Ramsay said, "...it was not pleasant. The whole operation is extraordinary. Quite emotional, really. I felt sick as a f dog in there. Next, I will think of something really nice to cook with them. But it's not a nice experience." Channel 4's decision to air the slaughter was met with praise from the animal rights group PETA. In a statement, the organization said, "...Paul McCartney once said that if slaughterhouses had glass walls, everyone would be vegetarian. If the F-word slaughter turns out to be as graphic and gory as we hear it is, then these animals' deaths will not have been completely in vain, since they will turn many compassionate people into vegetarians." Trini and Susanna were later served to guests at a barbecue. Certainly not a happy ending. At least not for the pigs. Lily, large one, medium one, or small one? Large one. There we go. Up. Off you go, my darling. While filming his hit TV series, The F Word, Gordon Ramsay almost died after losing his footing during a hike in Iceland. I'm just worried about standing up on the side of this. 
Well, you shouldn't worry too much. No, forget that. Forget that. Ramsey and his production crew were visiting the country's Westman Islands, and he apparently fell while descending a rock face. Ramsey hit the water, and his heavy boots only pulled him down further, causing the chef to panic, despite being a normally excellent swimmer. Ramsey told The Sun, I thought I was a goner. They say cats have nine lives. I've had 12 already, and I don't know how many more I'll have. Eventually, Ramsey freed himself and swam back to the surface, having spent 45 seconds underwater. His crew thought he'd been killed, but they eventually managed to throw him a rope and hauled him back to safety. Ramsey was treated for a knee injury back at his hotel before undergoing a medical examination in London. He told The Sun, I didn't tell my wife Tana at first. I chickened out, but she knew something was up. She was upset and extremely pissed off. When I was underwater, all I could think of was Tana and my kids. Gordon Ramsay was once headed down a very different career path. In an article for The Guardian, he opened up about his obsession with soccer, writing, My uncle Roland took me to my first game. I was seven and I went on his shoulders. The crowd was just phenomenal. We were standing by the terraces and I remember getting slightly nervous and very scared, and I loved it. Ramsay soon took up playing soccer as a hobby. As he puts it, I was a naturally aggressive left back, a cutthroat tackler. You may have got past once, but there was never, ever, ever a second occasion, and I was fast. My dream came true when I was spotted by a scout in the mid-80s, and I joined the youth team here at Ibrox. His parents eventually moved back to Glasgow, so he could sign for the Scottish professional football club Rangers FC. And Ramsey even ended up playing a small number of non-league games as a trial. Ramsey writes that, the games were really violent, not like the soccer we see nowadays. And then I got my bad injury. I tore my ligaments, and it was a heartache. Despite slowly working his way back to physical fitness, he was let go from the team. He writes that, I couldn't swallow it. I was gutted. F gutted. I can remember coming back downstairs and thinking, F hell. And worst of all, I still had to tell my dad, who was waiting for me in a transit van parked about 600 yards away from the main entrance. Ramsey took his first catering course soon after this unfortunate turn of events. And though he found vast success in that arena, he certainly has a few regrets. As he writes in The Guardian, Would I swap what I have achieved as a cook if I could have been as successful in soccer? Definitely, because there is a great feeling when you are excited and run out onto that pitch. And I don't give a fig when anyone says. There's such a huge, huge rush. It's taken a while, but it seems Gordon Ramsay has finally learned a lesson about the impact of his famous insults. The chef expressed regret for the comments he made against Australian TV personality Tracy Grimshaw following her somewhat awkward interview with the hot-headed chef. Now, are you comfortable? You've become such a prima donna since the last time <laughs> you were here. Your chair wasn't comfortable, your mic wasn't right. The next day at an event, Ramsay reportedly displayed a photograph of a woman with a pig's face to a crowd of 3,000 people and likened the image to Grimshaw. He reportedly told the crowd, That's Tracy Grimshaw. I had an interview with her yesterday. Holy crap, she needs to see Simon Cowell's Botox doctor. The comments were roundly criticized. In fact, even his mother was offended by the remarks. Ramsay told the Melbourne Herald Sun that he took his mom's criticism to heart and tried to clear the air with Grimshaw. I made a strong attempt on Saturday to contact her, and I suppose like any petulant teenager, when you get ignored, the whole thing escalated. I tried to contact her, there was no response on Saturday, so I kept jibbing away at her. I wish I'd had a chance to put this fire out three days ago." Grimshaw publicly responded to Ramsey's remarks, claiming, "'Truly I wonder how many people would laugh if they were effectively described as an old, ugly pig. How is that funny, exactly? And worse, it's not even witty. I spent all yesterday thinking about how to respond, and I honestly thought about saying nothing at all. But we all know bullies thrive when no one takes them on. And I'm not going to sit meekly and let some arrogant narcissist bully me. But despite what his publicist said in damage control, we do not have a great relationship. We have no relationship at all. This might not come as much of a shock to you, but Gordon Ramsay has a long-standing feud with Chef Jamie Oliver. Over the years, they've both made it abundantly clear that they can't stand each other. And they both seem to relish any opportunity to insult the other. Following Ramsay's rude treatment of Tracy Grimshaw, Oliver publicly criticized Ramsay in the press, telling The Sun, Aussies aren't forgiving. Once you're gone, you're gone. It's never good to criticize a woman, especially when they're loved by their country, and you do it on national television. In response, Ramsay said, Jamie Oliver is a one-pot wonder. A year later, Oliver told The Mirror that Tana Ramsay was a better cook than her husband. As he put it, if I was to choose between Gordon Ramsay's cookbook or Tana Ramsay's, it would be Tana's every time. Flying over 6,000 miles tonight just for this dinner. My gorgeous wife of 18 years, Tana. This back and forth went on for years, but things came to a head when Oliver said, Ramsay's got four kids and I've got five kids. Though it might have been an innocent remark, Oliver made the comment after Tana had a miscarriage. Ramsay demanded an apology and vowed to never speak to Oliver again. He told the Radio Times, Boys will always fight and butt heads, but Tana was mortified. I mean, really mortified. In my book, there's only one thing worse than disappointing me, and that's disappointing my amazing wife. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite celebrity chefs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.